Hi everyone, my name is King ID, and this is a high level demonstration on how to analyze purchase card data. So I've pulled and extracted all the data that's available on the City of Toronto Open Data Catalog. And Open Data is a concept of where governments and government institutions share data to the public in hopes that they do something useful with it. So open data is something that I'm very passionate about that I think provides a lot of good transparency. So what I've done is I've already downloaded the data and what the data looks like is you get an Excel spreadsheet from all the transactions from 2011 to 2013 and it looks something like this. So you'll see the division, it pretty much is all the purchase card information except for the actual employee. So obviously you have the employee, you could do a little bit more analysis. But this is pretty good, it has the purpose, the merchant, all that good stuff. So what I have, what I've done in ACL, and I'll have a separate video, is I basically combined 36 spreadsheets into one, and as well performed some additional analysis on top of it, such as identifying where gift cards were purchased using key cards, uh, where transactions were made on weekends, holidays, all that good stuff. So I'll have a separate video on how actually how to develop the script using ACL, which is a very powerful tool in terms of combining data. And, is, and uh, after the video, you should be able to know how to do it. So what I have next is a tool called Tableau. Tableau is a very powerful data analytics software, uh, data analytics slash visualization software. Very quick and easy to use. And again, I'll have a separate video for Tableau. So what you have here is basically all the amount of transactions per month over that three year cycle. So you can see the low is the 400,000, 400, the high is approaching a million dollars. So high level, there is peaks and valleys, but there's not a huge drop off or a huge increase um, over the over the time. So that's the basic uh, visualization that you can produce. What this one is a little bit more complicated. They call this a dashboard in Tableau, and this dashboard I've set up to be very interactive. So the top left hand corner is the spend by day of the week. Um, top right is spend by merchant, and then bottom left is spend by account and then spend by division. So for example, if we want to know uh, the spend on Sundays, where are they spending it, what divisions? So you can see Parks and Forest is a huge huge one, but let's look at, look at, for example, fire services. So what are they spending on Sunday? So you can see a good portion of that is actually Petro Canada, um, Shell, lots of different um, gas vendors. And what this tells me right away is, why don't they have a fuel card for a certain type of um, gas station so that, that way they can actually produce some savings. So maybe one, two, three percent savings if they all commit to ESO, Shell, and then this provides the data to, to the city of Toronto to actually have this negotiation with them. So really quick and easy way of performing that analysis. You can also do it from a different, you can start from a different manner. So maybe you want to start from uh, Petro Canada and see who are all the the different uh, vendors that are uh, who are the different divisions that are using it. So you can see solid waste management, emergency services. So you can ask them, okay, what else are you spending? Uh, so you can see we have gasoline here. So now we can go from gasoline, unfilter Petro Canada, and then what you can see here is that they spend majority on Petro Canada, but they also spend almost equal, actually more on SO and Shell. Some really quick analysis that you can perform using Tableau, which would have been really difficult having essentially 36 spreadsheets with tens of thousands of lines each. So really quick and easy analysis, but if you wanted to, for example, see all the transactions from that I posted on Saturday, posted by Public Health, and you actually want to see the transaction details, you can go to details and I've set up a separate dashboard set up a separate dashboard that actually shows you the transactions uh, that make up all the Saturdays. So you can see a lot of prescription drugs, uh, books and programs. So these are the, the purpose of the description that's made. So you can see there's 100 transactions with those details. 
So that's good, uh, interesting. So you can provide, do a whole bunch of different filters and really quick analysis, dive deep into the data, which is something that you probably couldn't do uh, beforehand using only spreadsheets. So that's interesting. So now what I have here is I have all the different merchants here and I have their, they're sorted right now by total spend. And you'll see the different years, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. In 2010, there's not a lot because really I pulled 2011, 2013 original postings. So what I have here is each of the months. So what's going to do is it's right now it's filtering on January transactions in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. And then what I have here is I press this play button and it goes through and you can see all the changes over time. And you can pause if you think there's something interesting. So you can see uh, cost bros turned to uh, was was total 34,000 uh, in the previous month. Uh, it was like 12. So you can see there is a spike in July. Why is that? Maybe that's something that you can ask in your questions. What I have next is one of the questions you may be asking is, do they have certain purchase card transactions that are happening more often in a certain month? Is there essentially seasonality? And what I have here is each of the months across the top, and within each of the months, each of the years. So, for example, this is 2011 uh, January, or 2000, yeah, 2011 January, 2012 January, 2013. And what this red line conveys is the average transaction spend uh, over that three-year period per per that month. So, what you can see is actually January, July has a huge spike. Uh, it is actually consistently higher than any other month, with maybe the exception of January 2011. So that's interesting. What are they spending their money in July? Maybe there's a good explanation. But that's something you can dive a little bit further using analytics, using this visualization. And that's a question you can ask. So what I have here is what I call, I like to call my audit. Um, this is where you really have your findings. So from an audit perspective. So you can see they spend $687,000 on weekends um, that didn't meet these other criteria. Uh, you can see greater than or equal to $10,000. So these are transactions where they're greater than or equal to $10,000. And the reason why these are important is that oftentimes you'll see, not often, sometimes you'll see transactions where they're greater than $10,000. And what they're doing that is to avoid the procurement process uh, because the procurement process may require them for additional approval, um, certain type of procurement method, whether it's quotes and they want, whether they want a sole source or they just don't want to go through the paperwork. So these are good to follow up on. And what each of these indi colors indicated are the various years. So you can see uh, 2011 dominates the greater than 10,000. Transactions were made on a holiday. Uh, transactions that were are hotels on the weekends. So why are they staying in a hotel on a weekend? Uh, alcohol purchases, gift card purchases. So this is particularly interesting uh, because technically gift cards are a taxable benefit and by purchasing gift cards on procurement cards, uh, you're actually having some tax uh, implications that need to be dealt with accordingly. Car rentals on weekends, so why are they renting cars on weekends? Jewelry purchases, uh, hotel hotel stays on weekends, uh, on, sorry, on holidays. So you can see really quick and easy way of turning really 36 of these spreadsheets from really just data, really just information to actually powerful tools that can allow you to make quick and easy decisions and are quick and easy analysis to actually follow up on. So really that's the power of data analytics and data visualization. And that's also the power of the ability to have open source data to allow individuals like myself or our different organizations to actually analyze and provide some recommendations to to really the organizations that use our taxpayers' money. So if you have any questions or comments, it's a topic that I'm really passionate about and really excited about. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you, and uh, have a great day.